Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the equilibrium equation for the unconfined aquifer. So let's start. So till now we have studied that in the geological formation, aquifer is such a formation which retains the water and as well as it yields the water in sufficient quantity. Now to derive the water or to extract the water out of these natural phenomena, now to extract the water out of these natural geological formations, we require the different types of construction techniques in which the most important mode of groundwater extraction is the well. So these wells are used for a number of different applications. Now when we talk about the unconfined aquifer, that means on the one side there will be a hard strata which would not allow any passing off of the water but from the top surface it will be open so that we can extract the water out of it. So what we are doing we have inserted the well. This one well has been inserted. Now what it will be doing it will be pumping out the water. Now when it will be pumping out the water before that there was a static water table that means this was the level of the water table in this aquifer and this constant level which was maintained in the static equi in the unconfined aquifer that is known as the static water table. Now as the pumping is carried out the lowering of the water table that will take place now if the aquifer is homogeneous that means the properties in the properties at all the points within the aquifer if they are same such type of aquifer is known as the homogeneous and if it is isotropic that means at a single point in all the direction if all the properties are same then that is known as the isotropic. So if these two conditions are satisfied then the water table which was the horizontal initially before the pumping was started what it will do it will start decreasing and it acquires a shape of the cone it acquires this shape of the cone because the water which is near to the well that will be taken out firstly and then the water from the surrounding it will move in and it will fill that gap. So what is happening this flow is radial because it is flowing towards the center because this structure that we are looking at that is from the front view. So you are looking directly at the screen but if you look at, at if you look at it from the top what it will be like this will be the cone of depression this was the well which was constructed so from all round this water will be flowing in and that is why it is along the radius and that's why the name comes as the radial flow so this highlighted structure that is known as the cone of depression because the water level is decreasing it is depressing down and the name comes as the cone of depression. Now the drop at any point let's say we have considered at this point so initially the water level was this one this would have been the water level but when the water has been taken out the water level which is now present will be this one. That means this is the value by which the water level has dropped. So this drop in the water level that is known as the drop down. 
and usually it is represented by capital S. So the drop in water table level at any point from the previous static water table level is called the drawdown. Now the aerial extent that means this entire area which I have, I have highlighted in the plan of the aquifer this total area is known as the area of influence that means when we are carrying out the pumping how much area is affected or is being influenced and the corresponding radius of the area of influence is known as the radius of influence now along with these terms when we are doing the pumping at constant rate so this is the constant rate of pumping that means we are taking out the water at the constant rate from the aquifer through the wells now the drawdown curve that develops gradually with time due to the withdrawal of the water from the storage that means this level of the static water table is decreasing as the time progresses so if the property of the water if that varies with the time such flow of the water is known as the unsteady flow so what we will do we will prolong the pumping that means this pumping has to be carried out for a long time and when it is carried out for a long time an equilibrium state is reached between the rate of pumping and the rate of inflow because what we are having we are having two things here that is the water is getting out and then there is the rate of inflow if these two are equal that means at the same rate the water is being extracted out and at the same rate the water is getting filled in that means the water surface level that will be a constant phenomena and such state is known as the equilibrium state and at such condition there will be no change in the flow property as the time progresses and such conditions are known as the steady flow condition and at this point the drawdown surface this cone of depression that will attain a constant position now if the pumping is stopped at any point then what will happen it will regain its original static water table so such recovery is known as the recuperation or the recovery and that will again be an unsteady phenomenon So these are the basic terminologies related with the aquifer and especially to the unconfined aquifer. So the non-artesian well, if we are if we are driving that, the water is pumped heavily so as to cause the sufficient drawdown, which is the drop in the water level. Now when the water level decreases, this water level in the neighborhood that will also fall down. and that is forming an inverted cone of depression now what is it it is a base of if we look at this cone this is like this so this base of the cone is a circle of radius r which is known as the circle of influence and this inclined side that is known as the drawdown now this method was suggested by the scientist named as thiem what it what he has done two observation wells which are lying within this circle of influence they are provided as shown here so two observation wells are provided along with the main pumped wells so through this main pumped wells so through this main pumped well we will be extracting the water because of which there will be a drop in the water level and along with it within the circle of influence we are providing the two observation wells that is well number 1 and well number 
corresponding to well 1 the drawdown that we are having that is s1 and that is provided at radius r1 from the main pumped well similarly for the well number 2 it is provided at r2 distance and the drawdown in that is s2 so this is an unconfined aquifer that is having impervious strata on the one end and other end is free and the depth of the aquifer or the water table that is d at the saturation stage or at the edge of the drawdown so this will be the capital r distance at which it will again be having the same water level now what we are having the radial flow the water from the surrounding that is flowing towards the center so corresponding to the radial flow corresponding to the radial flow in the unconfined aquifer we will be having the speed of the flow that is vr is equal to k into i where i is the hydraulic gradient now to have this idea what we are doing let's say at any surface this is at dr distance from the main pumped well the height that we are having let's say that is dh and this will be the inclined slope this will be dl now when we represent this i value this i is the sin theta and that is represented by dh by dl but if this theta is very small then sin theta would be equal to tan theta and this would be written as dh upon dr so what we do here this vr is written as k into dh over dr so that is the velocity of the radial flow that is when we are assuming that the inclination of the water surface is small now if you look at this actual velocity distribution versus the assumed velocity distribution now we are assuming that the water is flowing through the full height of the aquifer that means below this water table level which was the static one the entire area is contributing towards the radial flow and it is radial and horizontal that means all the velocity components will be horizontal and it is representing the uniform flow but the actual velocity distribution will be somewhat like this so whatever space is available the water will enter through that so it is not necessary that all the velocity components will be horizontal or parallel to each other so that's why this uniform velocity distribution that is an assumed one so till now we have received the statement for the radial flow that is k into dh over dr what we want to calculate is the rate of pumping or the rate of extraction of the water so for that this velocity is the radial flow that is that is what we are calculating now the discharge out of this pump at the equilibrium state this equilibrium state is reached when the let's say this is the velocity of extraction and this is the radial flow that is vr so if both of them are equal that is known as the equilibrium stage so discharge now the discharge out of the main well that is given by q is equal to area of well into vr now this is a cylindrical well and 
the height of the water in this let's say we have assumed it to be h and the radius is small r so the area of the cylinder that is given as 2 pi r h into the velocity of flow that is dh over dr that is the formulation for the discharge now after rearranging the terms taking all the constant on one side there was k term also which is which i missed out so this is q upon 2 pi k into dr over r and that is is equal to h into dh now we have to integrate this now integrating both the sides so the radius that is varying from the two observation wells so looking back at the image so these two wells that we were having the radius was r1 and corresponding to that the height of the water in that cylinder was h1 corresponding to r2 the height of the water was h2 so the radius is varying from r1 to r2 and height is varying from h1 to h2 so when we solve this this will be q upon 2 pi k this will be natural log of r so q upon 2 pi k into the integration of 1 upon r that is natural log ln r and it is varying from r1 to r2 then the integration of h will be h square by 2 varying from h1 to h2 solving it further this is q upon 2 pi k into ln r2 minus ln r1 that is is equal to h2 square minus h1 square by 2 now here 2 will be cancelled out so this will be q upon pi k into this natural log of r2 minus r1 it can be written as r2 upon r1 the natural log of this ratio is equal to h2 square minus h1 square so what we get as the discharge relation that is is equal to pi into k into h2 square minus h1 square upon ln r2 upon r1 this is the equilibrium equation for the unconfined aquifer which may also be found in some textbook as pi into k into h2 square minus h1 square converting this natural log into the log base 10 that is 2.303 log base 10 r2 upon r1 this is the general form that you observe for the themes equation for the unconfined aquifer which is also known as the equilibrium equation now in the next video we will derive the similar formulation for the confined aquifer thank you